given the name of our God. We are here again. Uh, we started this topic some time ago. What does it mean for men to be the head? We got a pause. When you ask a lady, she has a reason. She has her points. When you ask a man, he has his points. But when you you ask the word of God, you have the best points. <laughs> so for a lot of men, they think, okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you again for bringing us. Let that be your name. Father, as we are here to talk about the things of God again, please open our understanding. Speak through me. I don't want to speak words of my own. I want to speak only things that are directed and guided by God in the name of Jesus. Let this video be a blessing. Let it touch us and let it help us. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Mm -hmm. Like I was saying. <laughs> My lips is dry. I've not eaten. Well, I don't know it's in. dry. I've not drunk water. It's not breaking. It's just dry. It's not breaking. Thank God. So, I was saying that a man, when you ask them, what does being the head means? He has his reason. I mean, he has his points. When you ask a, a lady, she also has her points. But the word of God has the best points. It has the best meaning of what being the head is. How you can do it and you're not going to be hurting somebody else. And you're not going to be sinning against God. And everything will be perfect. And um, today we have a very unique topic. You know, all the while we have just been speaking any topic. But today we have a very, very unique topic we are going to discuss. Uh, I wanted to say before I prayed, I said, I wanted to say that when you ask a man, some men we, we think is just being the head means bullying a woman, making a woman to stay under you, unable to move, unable to do anything, just commanding this woman, I'm the head, I'm the head, you understand, making us scared and afraid. But when we go to the Bible, we see that love is not like that. You don't say you love me and I'm not free. You don't say you love me and and I and I and I can't talk and I have to be a slave and I you know it's not love. It is not love. Then you start treating a fellow human being as a property. It's not love. It's not love. You are continually saying I pay for your life, I pay for your life, but that's why I'm praying to God. God please bless me. Bless me as a woman. Bless me mightily. So that no man will come and say he bought me. Nobody should come and buy me. We are getting married to each other. Ne? The same way you want to marry me, the same way I want to marry you. It's not you are buying me as your property. And so I don't have right to anything. I don't have right to even develop my life. I have married you. I don't want. I don't want. I've been praying to God and I know God will answer me. I don't know why God is making it to delay like this. But whatever battle that is causing him, may the Lord destroy them in Jesus' name. Amen. So that's it. So what I'm just trying to say is that God has plans for us. You understand? God sure, surely has plans for us. He has plans for our lives. Yes. God has plans for our lives. And how we know is Okay, now, we have talked about how some men think about it. Now, let's go to how some women think about it. Some women think it's just um, a man providing for them. You understand? Before they need anything, providing for them. It's not a bad thing if they have that kind of thing. But at the same time, think, think in another way, in a man's view. How will you feel as a man? Every time you go out there, you walk. 
from morning till night. Maybe you have you are able to make five hundred naira in that day. You understand? And this woman already has bills of five thousand naira by the time you get home. You know, it's looking selfish now. And Bible says love is not selfish. You as a woman, you're not even working. So how do we balance these things? In a way that the man is being the head, the woman is happy, the man is happy, and we are using the word of God as our standard. You understand? The word of God, when we see the word of God as our standard, then we are not going to hurt anybody. The man is not hurt, the woman is not hurt. The man is not feeling like he's being used. And the woman is not feeling that she's being used. Sincerely, marriage is partnership. It's not somebody ruling over the other. We have some moms too where they say the woman is the one ruling over the man. These are not the plan of God. It's supposed to be partnership. This is what I've been looking for all my years when it comes to relationships. I've always been looking for somebody I can partner with. Someone we can talk. At least let's have discussion. Let's get to the point that we can actually agree on any discussion before we go into the marriage. Not just coming to me from nowhere and just saying, you want to marry me, me, me. It's scary to me. And that's why I, I run back. I don't feel comfortable when a man just jam me and say, you want to marry me. Without knowing me. Without allowing me to be free with you. Without allowing me to be comfortable with you. Without even knowing you. Without developing feelings and love and passions for you. Because when I love you and I have passions for you, you will always be in my heart. You understand? You didn't even give me a chance to develop this. You are always the one that would, eh, I want you. I want you fast. When you get into such kind of home, the day the woman says, I'm not comfortable to ask her, the man will say, you must. Because he sees himself as the Lord and the winner and the owner of that relationship. This is not how to be the head. You understand? The head is just, he's just trying to, give you more responsibilities for those kind of men that I even think being the head means just sitting down somewhere and then somebody is running a task and trying to get things for you. That's not being the head. That's just bowling and all sorts of things like that. When you have two partners, being the head means, okay, this man is always the one ahead. Like, okay, let's do this. But it will have to be that two of you, you are already compatible. You are already partners. You think alike. Because you are going this way and this woman wants to go this way. And you are saying, let's go. The woman will tell you, it's this way I'm going now. Why are you telling me to go this way? But by the time this woman is going this way, you say, oh, babes, let's go. You see, the match will be, will be very, very positive. Both of you are going the same way. Nobody is hurt at this time. You understand? So this is the will of God for marriage. And today we want to discuss the topic. Do you think a man that divorced his wife can be a good husband to a lady that has never been divorced in her life? A single lady? Do you think he can be a good husband to a single lady that has never been divorced? Or maybe a man that has kids from other women that he had called them baby mama. You understand? Do you think he can be a good Good husband to a, a girl or lady that's never been married, has never had even abortion, has never even had any wed any child outside wedlock. Do you think he can be a good husband to that kind of woman? We want to discuss. We're going to discuss to the Holy Spirit. At the same time, let's think. Let's be logical. Even though it's not the logic that we will use more, we will use the spirit of God more. But first of all, let's let's discuss. Now let's look at it. I'll first of all put it this way. This is one of the reasons why they say let God always be the start and the finish of our relationships. We have had stories of women that made mistakes in the past. Maybe in trusting a man so much, believing the man, only for the man to 
turned back and said, the girl is a fool to have obeyed and trusted him. I asked her several questions. Do you think I will? You know, these things are hurting. These are the things God is talking about when he says you are the head. He's trying to tell you that the woman that is trusting you is in, is in compatibility with you. Look at the person that I, I met over the weekend. He was saying everything I was against it. We were not compatible. But when you see a lady that's, okay, let's go to this place. Let me take, I will, I will take care of you, something like that. And she's believing you. This woman is in agreement with you. But you men, you don't know. You don't know that that is what being the head means. But then you now go after you have destroyed somebody's life. You now want to have a, a peaceful home. You now want to have a home where the, the, the woman obeys you. Where she... No, 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 no. This is not what it means. This is not what it means. Being the head is, is saying something and your wife agrees with you, your children agrees with you. They don't doubt you. But don't don't use that that to to destroy other women. When you are that kind of man that destroys men for believing in you, you are not being a man. You are not being a head. When you get married, you will find it difficult to to even behave like the head. You will be thinking is bullying, is just telling this man I'm your husband, I'm your husband, beating the woman that is what be no. It's acting right in the way that this woman trusts you enough. When you say babes, I'm I'm in the office, she believes you. Not babes, I'm in the office and the woman later on sees that you were with another girlfriend. You're not being head by doing that. that is not being the head. Being the head means acting right, doing the right things, being right. That's just a side way. <laughs> but what we're actually talking about that we have seen women that in their lifetime they they met the wrong set of men and they are actually men with good intentions. Because we know that some ladies, after having such kind of experiences, they become wild. They start sleeping with any man, anybody. Some even take their money, ruin their businesses, ruin their lives. You understand? And they don't care. But this woman remains like, okay, I believe I must have a man that I can trust. Again, another man does it to her. She's not being a fool. No. Yes, people will look at like a fool. Yes, they will judge her, but eventually there comes a man that sees her heart, a man that wants to do the will of God, which is what God really, really wants for us as women, that instead of allowing ourselves to be used and used and used, why don't we just wait for that God's plans? And it's one of the things God used to talk to me. Anytime people are trying to rush me into marriage or something, I'll just be like that. Rushing into marriage is not the issue. Like, it has to be a particular age. No, it's more than that. It must not have to be a particular age. It doesn't have to be a particular age. It must be the perfect age that God asks for. See that kind of woman that's, that's in her 20s and maybe up to early 30s was just having kids from different men because she trusted them for their work. And I eventually found a man that sees her heart, a man that wants to do the will of God. That will judge her, you understand. And then comes to say he will marry her. And then she eventually finds the perfect will of God for her. This is what God wanted us to wait for all the shares. You understand? What I'm just trying to say is that we have stories like that. Of women that have encountered such kind of things, and eventually, they eventually made the right man for them, and they have a happy home. I even know of a woman. You understand? She has once been with a bad man, and she eventually the marriage broke, and she now got married to a man, and she has been happy since she got married to that man. You understand? Whereas. God wants us as 
women to just wait for that will of God. I think that's what God wants for us. Not for us to, to just allow ourselves to be passed around by different men. These men don't see it as evil, but it's evil. It's evil, and they're not being the head by behaving like that. I believe God wants to wait for that person. It will look like, am I going to find him? Am I going to find him? You will find him. You will find him. If I had gotten married to some people in the past, I wouldn't be where I am today. Because God has plans. And where I'm, I'm still going, I know, I, I know I'm still going higher. Who knows? Maybe it's that higher position I will still meet the man that God has for me. Because I, my dream is very high. My goal is very high. Why will I marry somebody who doesn't want to go higher? Why will I marry somebody who just wants to stay in the same spot? Of course, we are not compatible. When he says, come, let's go this way. No, let's go this way. He's trying to go down. And me, I want to go this way. There will be chaos in the home. It means I can't submit to this man. Submission is just, is just somebody taking the lead always. But it has to be somebody you yourself, you are, you are agreeing with. It's something you yourself want to do, not somebody forcefully forcing you to do something like uh, how you force maybe a horse or I don't know what they force, maybe cow and all sorts of things that are forcing them to do something by force in for you. You understand? A marriage shouldn't be something of force. It's just a man that has killed himself to be the leader, to do right things. You are the one that will say, ah, my children, let's wake up and pray. You see some moms today, it's the wife that is doing all these responsibilities. It's the wife that will stay awake at night, praying for the family. And yes, you still want to claim you are the head of that family. But yet, you are, you are putting the wife in front. It's the wife that will fix the light, that will fix everything. All those uh, other things, the wife that will fix it in the house. And you are just there. You don't care about anyone. All you care about is outside. All you care about is your girlfriend outside. All you care about is how to spend your hard-earned money on some girls outside your home while you sleep with them. And your family is suffering. You don't care. Let's, let's by, by the grace of God, this is one of another topic we are also dealing with. Marriages that should not hold. Marriages where you are not responsible. You shouldn't even allow it to hold. Marriages, you don't know the meaning of marriage. You don't know how to be responsible. You don't know that that this home you are creating you know, is not for you to create it and leave them there. I just read a story before coming for my videos, the second part. The lady was talking that the father just said he wants to just go for holiday in abroad and he left their family for 18 years and the woman was pregnant <laughs> what kind of evil is that he doesn't talk to the f to the woman and this woman singularly took care of these kids despite that even in their the father's house they still put the woman in bondage so that she will not marry another person the pregnancy destroyed her. They put, like the child didn't survive it was terrible for her. And she had fibroid. They removed her womb again. See all these things this woman had to go through. And yes, you are, you are here as a single lady. You are crying. Oh, I'm almost starting something. No, oh, I'm not seeing husband. No. Oh. You are crying. Yeah. See what some people are going through. Like that kind of woman. Just a little patience. If she didn't marry that man, do you think she will not get married in her life? The man that's made... Made her, the, the family of the other were monitoring her to the point that she can't marry another person. And her womb was removed. Even if she marries another man, she can't, she can't give birth. And here is another woman where the husband doesn't stress her. She's okay. These are the plans of God for us. These are the things God wants for us. Don't settle for, for anything outside God's plan for you. If it's not working... Like God planned for you, don't settle for it. It's not God's will for you. A man that is already selfish, love is not, not selfish. I don't know what these men fall in love with. A man that is so selfish that doesn't care about you, it's not only about the money, it's not only about a man giving you what you want. The man I met over the weekend, he was just trying to give me everything. Maybe he was thinking I'm that.
I tell God that once you say man with money, you are you are enticed or something. I thank God, God, God has not put that kind of evil spirit inside me. Why? Why you just because somebody is just giving you this, and then your brain will scatter everything that you're supposed to think. You stop thinking about it, and you think this man is the best person. It's more than that. A man just giving you money is not is not the will of God. That 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 is all you need. It's more than that. It's more than that. You as a woman, you can make money. That was why I said that the will of God is partnership. Why did God say two are better than one? And why did God say one will chase a thousand while two will chase ten thousand? Why did God say one will chase nothing, no? One will chase nothing. But when they come together, they chase five thousand. By the time you are getting married and it's not a partnership marriage, it's only one person that is inside the marriage. Is that the man is continually stressed with with trying to move forward in his career and the woman is just sitting down there doing nothing. Or the woman is continually stressed with the house chores and everything and the man is not helping. So both of you are not together. You are not partnering. Nowadays we have workers that that do home home works. Like that can cook for you. And for you got your kids for you and you pay them. So it means that it's not it's not a work for marriage couples. It's not work for marriage couples, except if both of you said you you want to be doing it without employing people to do it for you. What I'm just trying to say is that it's no work that is for a particular person in the home. It's work for that some people should be paid for. You understand? If God has blessed you to employ somebody to do it for you. Why not? Then why do you think it's something that you have to do, then you don't have to develop your life, you don't have to have a career? You're... No, 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 it's not the will of God. It's not the will of God. And that's where we are. And that's what we are talking about today. I wanted to say we are ending. No, we are not ending. I've not even addressed the topic. I'm just going to decide talk since. What we are advising today, what we are talking about today is that, do you think a man that has had baby mamas, and um, was divorced from his wife. Do you think he can be a good man to a single lady that has never been married, no abortion, no extramarital affairs, no was not even side chick to any man? You understand? Do you think this kind of man can be a good man to that kind of woman? She does not even have any child outside the home. Do you think he can be a good husband? Let's think. Let's pray. Let's let's prayerfully think about it. <laughs> After I explained the aspect of women, that we have some women that are so innocent and all that, and I've also explained that this is the reason why we need the Holy Spirit. Now let's put it this way: I said that a lot of men are callous to women when it comes to acting towards women. They don't see women like somebody that should be treated rightly. You understand? And it's not good when you are that kind of a man. So this is what we are going to do. If you as a woman, you are in that kind of situation, you have to pray. <laughs> you have to pray. A man that got divorced. You know, before I used to think divorce is not even something a Christian should think about. But recently I see that it is... There are some situations where it's actually important for a couple to pass away. Or progress because when you join something that two things are not supposed to be joined together there's no way no how they cannot stay together it was not god that joined them you are the one that forced it and i'm looking at how people are just forcing relationships nowadays so i started thinking that sometimes god is not angry when there is a divorce yes god doesn't like it god doesn't like it because these children we have to to live in, in in homes where the parents are not together, yes, that is it. But if they have to stay in that home, it's worse for them. These are the children that become criminals. These are the children that see beating a woman as normal in a home where the father continually beats the mother, talks any hours with the mother. When this man gets married, these children, when they get married, they will think that is how you should talk to women. I see some men that try to talk to me like that. I shout at them back. You don't talk to me like that. 
you understand because i believe i am not supposed to be treated like that i believe that women are not supposed to be treated like that we have men that don't treat women like that you understand so what i'm trying to say is that before i used to think that divorce is wrong but now i see that there are some marriages that god didn't join God did not join them together. The Bible says what God has joined together. But most of the marriages we see today is what people are joining together. God didn't join a lot of them together. It's just when you see somebody, your, your spirit just, your body just arose and then you pregnant and time you think the best thing is to get married. God didn't even know about the marriage. You understand? There was nothing like it's from God. So, if peradventure there is a man like that, that probably she he fell into fornication, um, into marriage or something with a woman. Maybe the woman used um, juju on him, and eventually God opened his eyes and he can see. And now he's he's clean and and new in the Lord, like he's starting again in the Lord. And you, you are a child of God. And God makes you to see this. It is it is not a problem if you marry him. I'm talking from the Spirit of God now because I'm being very careful because this is a sensitive topic. I'm sure so many people will want to watch these videos and some may even be going through something like that and they will be like, ah, is it right? Is it right? Is it right? You understand? And if he's already a man that's understand the will and the plan of God for marriage. You understand what being the head means. It was just trapped. You understand? What I'm trying to say here is that there are some marriages that are not from God. Why we have the ones that are actually from God? If the man was trapped and now he's set free from the trap, it's not you that will go and set him free. God himself set him free. You understand? There's nothing wrong in getting married to me. But if in the other case, this man is just somebody that sees nothing good in a woman. For one time, you just want to sleep with this one, have pregnancy for her. Just going from one woman to the other, hurting them, breaking their heart, cannot control himself. Then he now sees you as a youth that is just growing your life. And I say, ah. All those ones, they are the thing of my past, so it's you I love. Run! <laughs> so you have seen the two differences now. It's also in the, in women too. If you, as a man, you are want the will of God for your life, and the lady who has been all sorts of things like that with men, without true repentance, definitely it's not going to be a happy one if you marry that kind of woman. And you are just like, ah, she can give good sex. Let me marry her with her four children. You understand? What I'm just trying to say there is that let's look for, out for the Spirit. For the Spirit of God in everything. In every relationship we want to go to. Like recently now, I got connected with a man. You understand? Like I, I could feel the Spirit of God walking between us. You understand? The connection was... I don't usually connect with people. The connection was kind of very, very good. And since I met him, you know, I actually thought maybe I'm a changed person now. Maybe that is why I was able to connect with him. And I noticed that it's not even about I'm a changed person. It's because the Lord puts the connection between us. Because I tried connecting with other people, which was still the same way. I always say no, 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 no to other people in the past. And I'm like, really? Which means God actually has something between I and this person. Then again, while he's not talking to me right now, I tried connecting with another person and I see that he's difficult. You understand? I'm just like, really? Does that mean God really, really has it that I and this guy should connect? You understand? So what I'm trying to say is that let's look out for the spirit of God in all these things. Because some people are actually trapped. Some people really, really want a good life for themselves. But when it comes to a man that is just messing around, who is a liar, who doesn't care about your feelings, who doesn't care how you feel, doesn't, who is not a real leader that you can look up to, I think you should run. No? Just say no. Just leave. 
And how do you know all this from what they say? Number one, then checking the spirit of God between you. Sometimes the spirits will be contradicting, but people will still go in. You don't have to go in. It's just like a bottle with its cover. If it's the right cover, you don't need to force it. It will just cover it normally. That day that God was using it to explain, it's just something that is like cover. Just cover it. You don't need to even twist it or something. Just perfect match. Then another one, that one was circle and circle. Then go now bring another one that is square. Now use it to cover that same bottle that has circle one. Before it can it can it can cover, you have to use maybe by force, you have to use maybe some metals to join it together. Even if it's that same type of circle, but it's bigger. You have to join it with metals, maybe thread and needle before you can force it to join. This is what we are talking about, that what God has joined together. When God joins something together, he joins the perfect match together. He doesn't join two different things together. But nowadays, people don't even care. They are looking at time. They are looking at age. Anybody, any other they see, they want to marry. So far, they can force them to sleep with them. And, and pregnancy comes in. They say, ah, lie, lie, we are not leaving each other again. It's for life. You are the one joining yourself together. And you have to continue suffering it when you get inside the marriage. But if you want the will of God, you can wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. A lot of people, after making mistakes, then they start waiting on the Lord for the perfect match. Why don't you come and wait for God? Like the example I did, that that's a woman that eventually found the right woman. God wanted her to wait for this man. The problem that she has caused by different men, we still continue to haunt her. Why not? Those other men, are they not going to see their children? Even if they are so irresponsible, they left responsible for the woman alone. Eventually, they will still say, ah, let me see if I can It still cause dragging and all sorts of things. But if you are the man, you are pretty sure that you can actually be with this woman. The Lord will be with you. Also, it will no longer be a problem. But the woman will still feel sad in her spirit. That, Lord, I wish that I didn't have to do things to myself. The man is enjoying the home, but the woman is feeling guilty for what she has done. So another thing we can learn from today's topic is that let's wait on God as women. Let's wait on God. God has the perfect match for us. The person that will give us the rightful things we need. Like I am now, that I, would, I don't want a man to bully me. I don't want a man that will just come and just, for no reason at all, will just slap me. I don't want... There are some homes like that. I don't want a man that will shout on me. You are not supposed to talk. I'm not saying my man should slap me. But I'm just using that as an example that the woman will not even do anything. The man will just come and just slap. You have to just to prove that he's the man. By God's grace, we are already learning that that kind of behavior is not being the man. Being the man and being the head just means being responsible, taking responsibilities always. Being the one that is always calming your wife down. A woman is supposed to be soft. By the time you are having a woman that is not soft, it means you are already causing her problems. When a woman doesn't want to follow you, what you are doing and all sorts of things that are good things, not bad things. It means you have derailed. You yourself, you are no longer on the right so path. So being the head just means acting right, doing things right, saying things and then your woman can trust you. Your children can trust you. You can tell your children, oh, I'm going to pay your school fees tomorrow and tomorrow the school fees is there. And if you don't have it yet, tell them I'm still praying. Let us pray about it. What a, a good head does is everything. Let us. You are always putting... This family together. You are the child that is continually bringing your family together. Let us do things together. By the time you are always taking these responsibilities, this woman will not even care to take these responsibilities by herself. It's the homes where the man are not, the man are not, the men are not responsible. That the woman will step in and start doing these things by themselves. It's the woman that will going up and down trying to pray that these children should become great in life. What is the man doing? Why are you the head? I'm not saying she's not going to pray, but she's following you. She's praying because you are praying. That is what in the head means. The wife is doing what you are doing. 
That is what being the head means. That is what God wanted. That was why God was so angry with Adam. Why, why will you listen to a woman I created after you? You are not the one that... You are the one that I put there to say, let us do the will of God. Not she telling you, let us sin against God. You are following it. It's wrong. I didn't put you there like that. It's not my way. I wanted you to be the forefront. This woman came after you. I wanted you to be the one to say, the Lord says we should know it is. So we are not going to eat it. Let's throw it away. This is temptation from the devil. And I'm sure many times the Lord would have told Adam that, see you. The devil will come to tempt you. Don't listen to him. But he chose to disobey. God was so angry. May God help us. And we are ending there today. Hope you have learned something. That for you as a lady. It's dangerous. If a man has been javarating everywhere. And now suddenly say it's you that I want to settle down with. It's dangerous. Even if he doesn't have kids and children from, from any woman. It's dangerous for you to just settle down with a man who does things like that. Because when he gets married, he will still continue. He hasn't changed. But if per adventure, we have, you have a good man that maybe he fell into all these mistakes and now he wants to correct his ways and you have prayed and God has given you assurance I will go with you, it's okay. It's okay. Even there are some people that, that they, ha they, they have not even had children and when you get married to them, they give you hell. So it's not about, does he have children, does he not have children that you should look out for? What you should look out for is, is it the will of God? Is God going to go with me in this marriage? Am I going with God? Is God joining us together? Like, check the spirit of God that is moving between you. Is he the one that wants you together? Or the one that continues to repel you? Because if somebody is doing something you don't like, you will be repelled. You will continually move apart from each other you can't agree you, you can't talk and you will say yes i believe you you understand you can't submit to him what do we mean by submit your spirit cannot submit to this man when he tells you something you are doubting it in your spirit that's another thing of submission submission just means somebody leading you let's do something and it's already something you want to do that is just submission it's not a thing of forcing somebody to do something. When you have to force your wife to do something against their wish, then you are not being the head at that time. You are being their boss. And if you want a wife that we always agree with you, it's in God. You are not going to be forcing that bottle, that cover to cover that bottle by force by force. It's just covers without any problem, without any issue. May God help us. We have talked so much and the body is low. Six business. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you, Lord, for all we have learned today. Father, if we continue to talk and talk, it does nothing unless you are the one that helps us to put it in our behaviors. Father, come and help us. Father, come and perfect your will in our relationships. Give us spiritual eyes. Every power that is coming between what you have planned in our lives for our relationship father destroy them in the name of jesus father destroy every plan of darkness over my relationship in jesus name father let your will continually come to pass have your way in jesus name as i'm going to today father go with us arise O lord let your enemies be scattered as i'm going in this week O lord go with us arise O lord let your enemies be scattered in jesus name father come and give me a good job very very soon to the glory of your name in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Have a great day. <laughs> because we hear the battery is low now. I think we should just stop. Maybe when there is light, I will continue. I have two more videos. We have done four now. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Bye.